China has finally broken its silence on the ever-worsening Evergrande and housing market crisis. This threatens to crash not just China's housing market, but cause contagion throughout the whole global financial markets. While some people think it's contained, this really is the biggest risk since the subprime mortgage crisis, but the world thinks the worst is over when really it's only the beginning of a slow motion meltdown. And China has finally broken in silence on the Evergrande situation. They're telling you not to panic. Everything is fine, but the markets and their actions are showing otherwise. Let's have a look, everyone. So what we know so far, the crisis at Evergrande has led to a drop in sentiment among home buyers. An estimated 1.6 million households have put deposits on Evergrande apartments that have yet to be built. Sales by the country's top 100 real estate companies tumbled 36%, which was worse than Goldman Sachs' worst case scenario for the housing market in China. This happened in September from a year earlier, according to China's Real Estate Information Corp. That's putting pressure on China's economy, which relies on broader property industry for almost a quarter of its gross domestic product. This is leading China's GDP growth targets to plummet. Goldman Sachs' GDP growth probability slowed to 5% in the third quarter from 7.9% in the previous three months. And for China, property and real estate is everything. 90% of the population owns real estate. 70% of China's wealth is in real estate. There's huge cultural pressure to own real estate, especially for men, because if they don't own real estate and they want to get a wife, the other family will look down on them if they don't own real estate. This has caused the biggest real estate speculative frenzy in history where developers sell these flashy apartments to investors and speculators that don't even fit out these apartments, don't even rent out these apartments, they just leave them empty, hoping to sell them for a profit in three to five years. Many buying them five years before they're even built, but this has triggered a Ponzi scheme where developers take deposits from investors and then use that to create other speculative businesses, like with Evergrande's owner who brought a soccer team and also created an electrical vehicle company. But now with Evergrande's clap exposing this Ponzi scheme, this is what's happening now, everyone. So China's economy is now reeling from successive punches from all angles. I'll bring up a chart here. We can see manufacturing, which is a huge part of China's economy. And remember, China is the factory for the world and the producer for the world of many products. So if they slow down, if factory orders slow down, then we're going to see lower growth throughout the rest of the world and also the supply chain crisis is going to get even worse with a massive amount of power outages in china so we can see here manufacturing the white line is in contraction new factory orders are also in contraction and new export orders for factories are in contraction and we can see here blue line construction is also now starting to decline and so this has finally led Chinese officials to break the silence on Evergrande risks. And of course, they're saying it's controllable. There's nothing to worry about. But let's look at the facts and let's look what the markets are saying about this. Authorities and local governments are resolving the situation based on market-oriented and rule-of-law principles. People's Bank of China official Zhao Len said at news briefing on Friday, the central bank has asked lenders to keep the credit to the real estate sector stable and orderly. So Zhao is the head of the financial market department. Now, one thing you have to know, everyone, throughout every crisis in history or just before every major market crash in history, the government officials, their number one job, as they said here in this article, is to maintain stable and orderly markets. So no matter how bad the situation is, they're going to come out on their pedestal and tell you not to panic everything's fine when really underneath the surface things are crumbling and things are rotten to the core just like how in 2008 ben bernanke at that time the federal reserve chairman said the banking sector was strong the financial markets are strong there's nothing to worry about and then of course we had the subprime mortgage crisis of 2008 shortly after 
Concerns are growing that the cash crunch at Evergrande is spilling over to other developers. As President Xi maintains strict measures to cool the property market, contagion fears intensified over the past two weeks after a surprise default by Fantasia Holdings Group Co. and a warning from Cynic Holdings Group Co. that its default was imminent. The central bank is urging property firms and their shareholders to fulfill their debt obligations, Zhao said. A slump in developers' offshore dollar bonds is a natural market response to defaults, he added. And look at this. This is absolutely insane. Yields on China's dollar junk bond yields hit a decade high as the rest of the world looks on. We can see here they hit 20%. So the markets are pricing in that many of these developers will default and will go down. So again, the officials are saying one thing, but the markets are saying another. So statements from Zhao, the head of the financial markets, has also come out and reaffirmed that they're not going to be bailing out these developers and they're still going ahead with their common prosperity goals and wanting to cool the housing market. So they said that China's government has insisted that property is not to be used as short-term stimulus for the economy. Cities have seen an extensive surge in property prices, which mortgage restrictions help to curtail. Property investment has slumped recently after some developers faked credit problems, but this is a normal market phenomenon, he says. Some banks misunderstood macroprudential policies regarding the property sector. So this is the strongest signal yet that authorities won't come to the rescue of creditors of Evergrande and other developers, said Travis Laundry, a special situations analyst who publishes on Smart Karma. But this is also leading them to panic about the situation in the housing market. So financial regulators have told some major banks to accelerate approval of mortgages in the last quarter. Lenders were also permitted to apply to sell securities backed by residential mortgages to free up loan quotas, easing a ban on imposed early this year. So again, they're saying one thing, but the actions are showing another. And before the property tycoon, the owner of Evergrande could turn to his friends to give him a handout, but now they're turning their backs on him as his $300 billion in liabilities is too big to save. The central bank's criticism of Evergrande's strategy to blindly expand doesn't bode well for billionaire founder Huey Ka Yan. And look at this, everyone. Companies are leaving China in droves. So Microsoft shuts LinkedIn in China, citing challenging climate. So we're seeing a huge tech crackdown. We're seeing private schooling crackdown. We're seeing gaming crackdown. And many companies who may be thinking of expanding in China may now have second thoughts. And people, the situation is just getting worse and developers are dropping like flies. And look what happened on Monday. All hell broke loose in China's bond market. So besides Fantasia, another developer is likely to go under. So other signs of stress included small arrival Modern Land asking investors to push back three months a 250 million bond payment due on October 25th. In part to avoid any potential payment default, this was not expected and Modern Land's April 2023 bond plunged more than 50% to 30 cents on the day. It's a disastrous day, Clarence Tam Fixed Income PM at Avenue Asset Management in Hong Kong told Reuters, highlighting how even some supposedly safer investment grade firms have now seen 20% wiped off their bonds. We think it's driven by global fund outflow. Fundamentally, we are worried the mortgage management onshore hits the developer's cash flow hard. He added, referring to concerns, people should stop putting deposits down on new homes. And so JP Morgan analyst said, while today had been disastrous, it could get far, far worse if the market loses face that Beijing will bail out the bond market. And this is leading some other experts to say that China's Evergrande crisis, like I said in my previous video, could be worse than the US crash. And it could also be similar to when Japan's housing bubble burst. Because compared to the subprime mortgage crisis when the housing market at that time was valued at 25 to $30 trillion, China's housing market is owed at $62 trillion. There's so much more leverage with these speculative apartments that many people are just leaving vacant. And unlike in the US where the real estate market makes up 6% of GDP, in China it makes up nearly a third of China's GDP.
So everyone, while the mainstream media goes quiet on this situation, we have to continue to monitor the markets to see what is coming because this is a massive, massive risk. And the date that I'm looking for is the 23rd of October because the first date that Evergrande missed their bond payment was on the 23rd of September. But with the bonds, they have a 30-day grace period. So Evergrande won't officially default until the 23rd of October. So if they don't pay up on the 23rd of October, they're going to default. And then we could start to see some chain reactions that could send the bond market tumbling in China and also the share market. And this could cause contagion throughout the whole global markets. So that's something I'm going to be watching. And I'll let you know and keep you updated every step of the way. Now, for all my loyal viewers and subscribers to watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.